So I came across this blog post on Twitter suddenly and I was reading this blog and suddenly I realized that something feels off with this platform in general. Because I've never seen, I've never heard about this platform Fleek and, you know, because Next.js is popular and now it's supporting Next.js and it uses words like serverless and edge compute and all of that. And I was like surprised, like how come I have never heard about this platform? And then when I started to read this blog post, they have written like a lot of things about Next.js and what they support. And I start to read this over and over again, like I just started to read more and more of this Fleek and what this is. I realized that they have written that this is a lightning fast on chain cloud so i figured out is this something related to web3 and all then i checked out their website and i did a little bit of research and i figured out that this fleek is a platform it's a part of a bigger thing known as fleek.network which is basically a decentralized hosting and i don't know about you but i've never heard about something like this i'm not very well connected into web3 world and ecosystem but this seems like what they are doing is that they are running your data or they are running your code on actual real computer Computers, real users computers right so your user a single user is an edge in a way for example i can convert my macbook into a fleek node and it would become an edge so i read a little bit about their white paper also which i would recommend i'll leave all these links in the description so you can go through their white paper also in which they tell like what they are doing and how they are working so what's happening over here is that let me take the screenshot and let me just try to make you understand how this is different from a product like Vercel. Let's talk about how this works in a traditional architecture, right? So you will have probably a few computers in US, in the West and the East side. And then maybe you have something in Africa. And let's say your visitor sits over here, right? So they are situated over here. So in case of traditional compute, what happens is the moment you write something like, let's say, fermion.app, right? So you will write this domain, this user will write this domain, and it will take them to the closest location, like whatever the closest geographical location is based on an anycast IP address, right? If there is a data center right in this country itself, it will take them to that. Now that specific data center, ideally, or the code wh wh wherever it is running, it's managed by the central company itself, central Versal itself. In Web3 or in Fleek's case in general, what happens is that these computers might not be by Fleek themselves. They might create their own edge computers. They might create their own edge softwares. But what happens is that you as a, as a person can create a computer today and become part of the chain, right? So you can get connected with all the other computers in the network, right? So you can be part of them. And every node has some reputation, right? So if you look into their paper, you will see this section called performance-based reputation. And it says like Fleek Network has implemented a reputation system that allows nodes to provide scores for each other. These scores are collected over time and at the end of each epoch, an aggregation of the algorithm is run to calculate overall scores for each node. So every node in the network has some sort of scoring associated with them, right? whatever node is delivering compute and data and storage and all of that. And based on the reputation of the node, more further requests would be served by it, right? So if the latency, bandwidth, satisfaction score and reputation is higher, the chances of that specific node serving more data would be higher. Now you would be wondering like, why would I even become a node? Like it seems like a computationally heavy expense and why would I want to be that? So the answer for that is that if you are a node operator, you will receive rewards from stable coins, right? Ensuring a stable and predictable income stream. So basically, Fleet is charging developers for using their network. If you go to fleek.network or fleek.xyz, I think you would be able to see some sort of pricing they have over here, pro plan and enterprise plan, all of that. But they also pay people who are part of the network itself right of course there are terms and conditions and i'm not aware about like i'm not dug deep into this so don't just take my word for it please go ahead and do your own research also like how the payments and everything works but it seems like a plausible thing right you create something open source and decentralized which can maybe compete with Versal. i don't know which is like an edge network sort of thing and then you earn money as well which is great now, there are a lot of things which are discussed in their white paper, which I don't fully understand because like I'm not from a Web3 background and I'm not understood like what these, uh, this, there was this one algorithm which they were talking about, SNARK algorithm. So SNARK is a mechanism which um, they said that they, it's like a zero knowledge proof of concept that you are able to prove something that you have access to or you have done a specific thing without actually revealing the information, which is good, right? So they use 
these sort of algorithms and these sort of things to ensure that nobody's like tampering with the content and if they are their reputation score decreases or you know something like that if they're trying to mess around with the algorithm so they would not get many requests thinking about fleek it sort of reminds me of tor in a way but i think fleek is a much more optimized thing because it's supposed to work for internet right it's supposed to work for normal applications tor is like layer over layer for abstraction Plus, in case of Fleek, they are also using IPFS. So again, in their white paper, you can see they would have mentioned IPFS. Fleek Network has a built-in file system powered by multiple external decentralized storage protocols like Filecoin, IPFS, all of that. They're using machines. I'm pretty sure they would have a lot of machines of their own, but they are also accepting nodes from people. So that's interesting. You can create a node and you can start earning. Now, I was trying out their platform and to say the least, I wasn't able to even set up a single repository. I did connect my Git account. I did create this project Fleek Test, but it just, it's stuck on building, right? So it never really builds. And when I go over the deployments part, it's not deploying anything. I've tried like redeploying it multiple times, but it doesn't work, right? So I don't know like what's happening. But what I was able to figure out is that if I go back, you see, they gave me this little mon quick dot on fleek dot app domain right so at least i know what sort of temporary domain they give to everything right so this is on fleek dot app so what i can do is i can search for other websites on the same domain right so you see i did search it before creating this video and i found out a couple of these websites and you can see that there are some ai trading and all of these like sort of shady apps <laughs> visible on this network so this nixtrading.onfleek.app is something which is loaded on the Fleek network. And if I go ahead and try to play around with this a little bit, let's try to figure out where the things are, right? So you see that first of all, this is, is this Cloudflare? Yeah, this is Cloudflare. So, hmm, hmm. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's served by Cloudflare, which I did not expect, but sure. So, I mean, I, I don't think we can go any further beyond this. If this was some other IP, I would have like tried to figure out which where this IP is or where this is hosted. But if you have put Cloudflare in front of you, then it's basically like not a good way to do a little bit of more research, right? You can see that they are using IPFS. So you have IPFS roots and all mentioned here. Maybe you can extract out this exact document with, with an IPFS. Then taking a look at assets from where the assets are getting served. Okay, that's crazy that this website has no assets. Just a single page and all the other things are data URLs. Let's try to find out some other website. Let's take a look over here. ScooterLouis.OnFleek.App Over here you can see these assets are also served by Cloudflare on IPFS. Interesting. So I don't know what the end goal here is, end play here is. They did announce in that blog post of Next.js through which I got to know about this. This is deploying full stack Next.js apps with SSR routing and more. So I really want to try this out once, but apparently it's not working in my case. So they do say like, you know, you are able to provide an edge runtime and then you are able to build. But if you are using Cloudflare, are you actually using Cloudflare workers for this fleek? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Because if this really is Cloudflare, then this would be disappointing. But I'm pretty sure it would not be, right? Otherwise, what's the use case? Because right now, a couple of websites which I just browsed are hosted on IPFS and they're served by Cloudflare with Fleek as a top layer. So if you look at these assets, again, served by Cloudflare, hosted on IPFS. The routing layer maybe is handled by Fleek, but I mean, I don't know. This indeed is an XJS app, right? So I don't know if you enable server-side rendering on this, what would happen? Because you're still routing it via Cloudflare. So you are doing SSR and then serving it via Cloudflare or how does that work? But nonetheless, the concept is very interesting. That is what I wanted to make the video about, not in general about if Fleek is good or bad. It's something interesting because I've never thought about Web3 as a hosting thing. It always has been like, you know, as a immutability thing that you have created some sort of transaction or something then you can't mutate it back and you need, need like a whole network of computers to verify and validate that but if you can create a platform out of it that can compete with something like Vercel or even Cloudflare that would be crazy good right so yeah that's basically it for this video make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel let me know in the comments below what do you think I'll leave all the links below in the description check it out and I'll see you in the next video really soon